Welcome to Evening Review. My name is Juana Klache. Please take a look at today's newspaper. Joining us in the studio today is the Student Union of Namibia, Brian Ngushinado. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. Um, it's the start of the year. Um, would you let us into what the union's um, plans are for, for the academic year? Uh, we have marvelous plans and programs lined up for this particular year. Uh, we are busy uh, setting up an appointment with NASFA, for example, to amend some of the policies that are discriminating, especially uh, students who wish to study at tertiary schools. We are engaging different institutions of uh, high learning. On some institutions, don't actually have student unions or student representative councils, like such as NAMCOL, which is quite compromised. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the policies we are looking at. And uh, we are also stretching out, setting up branches throughout Namibia, all 12 regions. We we, by end of this year, we should have all these branches set up. Mm -hmm. So it's quite a busy year. Uh, with the little funds that we always put, pull together, it's going to be a challenging year, but uh, everything is doable. Is it? Mm -hmm. um, talking now to the individual institutions, IUM, UNAM, NAST, and the other and the other small institutions, what are the specific programs that you are looking at going into with these institutions of higher learning? Uh, programs, especially, let's start with the University of Namibia, which is to me one of uh, the, we are the biggest institution in the country. Uh, we are looking at setting up disability units throughout uh, the whole 12 campuses of the university, obviously working with the university. Um, uh, IUM and the others, the same. And we are also looking at uh, stretching out uh, to set out branches for SUN uh, to engage and assist students on whatever matters they have because some institutions don't have the student union as an organization or as a society on their campuses. So, so the exercises need to be checked or ke kept, in, kept in, 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 in balance by mm. this particular student union of Namibia. That's why at every branches, at every tertiary school, the one you mentioned, IUM, Triumphant, NAMCOL, VTC, we are looking to set up strong structures there that mm -hmm. could work with the SRC and most, lo most likely also work with the management. Is it? Uh -huh. um, and then um, we've had the COVID-19 pandemic with us now, officially in Namibia since March. Um, looking at the readiness of high, higher learning institutions to deal with this pandemic and ensure that um, student population and staff members do not contract COVID-19. Are you satisfied with what you're seeing on the ground and do you see room for improvement? I see, I see a lot of room for improvement but with the satisfaction part uh, we are not satisfied because most institutions don't even have 
e-learning facilities. They don't have that particular uh, niche that could allow students to study online. Like the University of Namibia, for example, provides mm. internet services, whether it's a Dango or a Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi or pocket Wi-Fi device. When you look at other institutions, for example, they don't have that, and you know people lost jobs. Parents don't have money to buy airtime to buy data for their kids. So it's quite a challenge and a lot of students have failed. A lot of students dropped out of the of, of tertiary school. Some students even went to that extent of selling what we call jangis or fat cakes mm. to, to sustain themselves. Now the universities and the city police and everyone has been chasing them away from not selling that. Mm. Uh, with the room for, uh, for, for improvement rather, it's, uh, it's, it's doable uh, because uh, uh, the universities uh, especially the University of Namibia is busy training their staff members to, to get acquainted with the electronic uh, learning uh, system, mm. e-learning system. Yeah, so that's, uh, th there's a lot of room for improvement, but in terms of the economic aspects, I think it's very going to be very expensive, especially for the students. Mm. Um, now, taking into consideration the various stakeholders, you've got the inst academic institutions on the one hand, You've got the service providers on the other. You've got um, government also as a partner in all of this. In order now to enhance this e-learning experience for, 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 for students, um, what would you like to see all of these role players? How do you see these role players coming together and creating this conducive environment for students? Uh, I think uh, the main thing is to get rid of their capitalist mindset of just profit, profit all the time, even stretching out to the government, which is also profit, profit. I think it's a high time that we look at social communism approach where they provide internet services even at the cheaper for free uh, to tertiary schools or even secondary or primary school, whatever the case is. Uh, NASFF last year attempted to provide uh, computers and clearly there was some politics behind it. Uh, but uh, if they could just get rid of the mindset of seeking profit all the time, then we could uh, have uh, an improved situation where people can learn from home, go to the government offices, like especially the Ministry of Higher Education or Basic Education, uh, apply for a for a laptop or whatever device, and then they can make uh, the the uh, the learning uh, experience worthwhile. Uh, yeah, NBC could also come on board, so which is since it's a national, or even Sun could start providing online online courses, online teaching. Uh, we, we do that at the primary level. You do it at the primary yes. level. Maybe you guys could also <laughs> stretch out to the tertiary schools. I'm sure the, the CEO is, is listening attentively. Mm. Um, now, uh, every year, with the beginning of the academic year, there's, uh, there's this thing that is, that is quite noticeable is that the funding, students go and apply for funding at NASFAF, and then there's always a problem of students feel that they should get the money directly and that um, the middleman should be cut out. Um, you know, there are, there are always all, all of these types of discussions that are taking place. And then you'd also sometimes see NASFAF wanting to purchase um, the laptops for the students instead of the students just getting that whole capital amount and doing with it um, as they see fit or how best they can utilize that money. In approaching NASFAF, you, uh, what are you looking at doing differently and how realistic do you, do you think you are that you could perhaps see a change in <coughs> how, how funds are dispersed to students? Uh, yes, uh, beginning of the interview, you just asked me what our year plan is. Basically, it, one of them is to look at the policies of funding. And, but the primary uh, fight that we are having is, uh, is, is getting rid of NASFAF. Uh, the government allocate budget to tertiary schools directly and students, if you are a student there, you just go to the finance department and say, deduct my tuition fee, whatever is left, give it to me as refund, let me go buy a laptop. Because with NASFAF, they allocate, they give you a, a, a loan most of the time and then you are likely to suffer throughout the year without a textbook, without a pen, without transport money to go to school, with threats from, uh, from your landlord that you didn't pay rent because you, are, you were expecting to be funded already from February, March. So our, our fight, our primary fight is for, for the government, after they read their budget in March, April, they could directly fund the university and the university could f refund the students and the mm. students can live a, a wonderful academic life. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, okay, all good and well. Um, Going to go back to your to your, your plan planned activities for, for 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 the year, and when one as one listens, um, you know where, where why why doesn't 
in in your in your uh, position, uh, the, as far as the um, sun is concerned, uh, why why are we not hearing things on like um, more investment in in, in research, um, safer environment for students, um <coughs> access to education, at looking at free education? Where, where where why are we not hearing these type of discussions coming from? From Sun. Okay, uh, no, uh, our theme is says it, or, says it already, which is uh, a free education and quality education in our lifetime. So that's what we are fighting free education. And free education could use a model that Botswana basically uses, which is like what I said, just the university gets funded directly by the, by, by the government. Mm -hmm. And then the student just, you know, you have 25 points, 20 points, 17 points. It depends on the course. Mm -hmm. As long as you're in Namibia, as long as you're admitted, you can go and register. In terms of safety, yes, we have, uh, uh, for example, I'm the secretary for policy analysis under the student union. Yes, we are engaging with uh, the different stakeholders, such as city police, to, to patrol the environment where students are, are often uh, interact, whether they go into the shopping complex or whatever the case is. So we are looking at the safety, we are looking at uh, the gender-based violence issue, education, not only just to arrest the male counterpart, also to educate our brothers and even sisters to avoid such, such, such violence. We have different offices under the student union which are dealing with these different, uh, different social ills, should I call them. Uh, issues that are affecting the students to a certain extent. Mm. Mm. And then now, I want to come, how, how much of a bearing, because um, you know, one, one, one can fairly say, or accurately say, that all of you within the Sun leadership do have political homes, um, would not now go to the extent of, of, of naming the individuals that um, occupy these positions, but how much of a bearing does do these different political um, homes have on the direction in which you're taking, which you're taking, son? Uh, the moment we, we we took up this position, we were having only one interested heart, and that's students. So we didn't come, or we don't have, I haven't come of a, 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 any of my colleagues talking about their political party, vote for my party, let's influence the students to a certain extent. We are only there to advocate for student matters. I don't think there is any of of my colleagues who came to the media and say I'm from Student Union of Namibia, vote for LPM. I belong to LPM, that's why I'm using that as an example. Mm. Yeah. But I mean, um, you know, coming now, should, w when decisions are made, when you're in that process of formulating plans, with all of these different political, um, political homes that you come from, how much would you say that influences what goes into driving Sun's agenda? You mean in terms of political uh, influence? Yes. I, I would say zero percent because we are just there for the student. That's what we always had in, at heart. Most of us join our political homes months after the sun was formed. So from the beginning, we just had students from the from And, and of heart. course, you are free to um, your political association of your choice. To, to be affiliated, yes, to yeah, there's freedom of yes. political association, which, which which also is in compliance with the constitution, freedom mm. of association. We cannot take that away from anyone. Mm. And then, um, and then, what what I, what I would like to know is that sometimes it would seem as if the impression that one gets, and I could be wrong, I may be wrong, is that when you look at Sun, you, you know, you see a pseudo political association or political movement. Um, how fair do you think that, that is? Are you student activists or are you politicians? We are student activists uh, under the student union banner. Yes, when we are in our political parties, when we are doing door-to-door -door campaigns, we wear our party colors and we do the door-to-door -door campaign. Uh, we are neutral, we, we are apolitical, we accommodate everyone else. Mm -hmm. That's why we left Nanso. Nanso was affiliated to Swapo, and uh, it, it maybe still is affiliated to Swapo. The basis or the foundation on which Nanso was formed was Swapo. Mm -hmm. Although some of them are in denial, they will say we are independent, you know, but they, but we, we could see how they go to Swapo rally. The whole Nanso executive will wear Swapo colors and go to a Swapo rally, for example. Mm -hmm. There's no way uh, they were going to say they are apolitical. But to be fair, I mean, uh, you know, looking back, you wouldn't say that there was a, <coughs> a, a sister or a rival student union um, running parallel now to Nanso. There was. Oh, okay. There was Nasim, uh, which was under the, the, the Swanu Swan, Swan party. Uh, there is... Probably in stature. 
No, no, they were, they, 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 they were actually a rival. They were doing a good job in the 80s. No, talking now post-independence, you know, modern day Namibia now. Yeah, Nassim existed for a while, okay. and, and, but in our politics and the NBC being captured, they will obviously promote one side of the, of the, of the, of the coin. <laughs> um, and then now, but what, 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 what I would also like to establish is Sun, um, because you are, you are saying that you are apolitical. Are you aligned to any, 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 any trade union movement? Yes, we work with also an eight political federation, which is TUKNA, the Trade Union Congress of Namibia. They are very supportive, and lately we organized uh, with uh, a union affiliated with the federation, the Teachers Union of Namibia. We organized this mass demonstration of unemployed teachers. Mm -hmm. So we are working quite close with TUKNA mm. because we believe they can speak their hearts and actually challenge the status quo whenever it is necessary, unlike the NUNW, which will just clap hands all the time. Um, would you be willing to work with NANSO on student-related issues for students or for the advancement of student issues in the same vein that you, that you, that you, that you seem to f have formed this co um, collaboration with, with Dukna? It depends on what we agree on because we, as I said, we don't work with political parties and we believe they work with a particular political movement. So if the agenda is clear and well defined, we could sit around the table and discuss for the goodness of the students. But mm. if they come with an agenda of promoting somebody, students might today organize a strike official and say, we want our money instead, sell those houses so that the properties that they got and pay our students to tuition fees. If Nanzo is on board on that one, then we can work on something. But mm. if they are not on board, then we know where they stand. So, but there are grounds we can work with Nanzo. Mm. Has, has there been ever has there been attempts since the um, uh, since the formation of Sun formally to you know to to, to 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 work together collaboratively on certain issues? Have, and have you found that support coming from the part of Nanzo? For example, if one has to look at free education, if one has to look at funding that is provided from 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 NASFAF. If one has to look, take regard now for the unemployed teachers. As has, have you found uh, have you found any feelers being extended from that end? Not really, but I would uh, limit that or boil down to um, the campus level, where Nanso Society, with the Student Union Society, Student Union of Namibian Society, I'm now boiling. They work together, but here at the national level, not actually. I haven't seen them working or extending that helping hand. Mm. Mm. And then, um, what is the best way in which um, government can deal with the issue of now the unemployed teachers that are the qualified unemployed teachers that are now seeking formal employment? We did our research. We found out that there are schools, especially in Opuo, taught under tens, kids are hundred, well, for example, uh, with one teacher. If the government could avail funds, split this class in two or three, they can hire two extra teachers to to have this. Uh, this particular uh, class taught fairly and the student to learner relationship is well, uh, well, well polished up. Yes, that's one. So we need these classes to be split into smaller groups and hire more teachers. And we want them to get rid of the interview system because uh, you find a teacher, uh, 400 teachers, for example, or graduates going for an interview of one position. Or even in some cases, even 1,000 teachers are applying for one position. When you have the, 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 the nurses, for example, I have nothing against the nurses, but the system that they are using under the Ministry of Health, where they could just allocate or appoint uh, the graduate teachers, because a lot of teachers are under pressure with the number of learners they have, and the government is just arguing. There is no money to, uh, to hire more teachers. Mm. So they could split this uh, big classes into small groups and hire more teachers. That's our position. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then the changes now to um, the curriculum at the high school level. Your thoughts and, um, and, 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 and um, how do you see this working out? Uh, well, uh, when I was a student leader at the university as an SRC, we attended uh, a workshop with uh, UNAM uh, management, especially around the academic affairs. We came across that there was poor consultation that was done, especially to get these particular syllabuses approved. So, and, and the universities at the moment are not prepared for taking in grade 11s and, and, the, and the people on the street and on the ground, they are arguing that I'm exit my child 
already from grade 11 and I'll send him to the university. There's no time. The kid is growing up. Let's take him to grade, grade, uh, the university to grade 11, uh, from grade 11 stage. So the universities are quite not prepared and that's, that's a problem. I think there was poor consultations done. That's why most of the activists, we are arguing that there be a consultative kind of a commission that needs to be implemented as fast as possible because I think the minister just wakes up in the morning and then just start implementing things and change syllabuses left, right and center. Yes, with uh, Dr. Apra Miyambo, we know that he was working on getting an A-level system in the school, in the school curriculum. But it, he was consulting. It's just unfortunately, he's not around anymore. But then that's what happened, and we do not approve of the new syllabus because it's ex the exit point of the kids is too too early. And number two, to say a person who fails grade nine should be dropped out of school. The whole system that was used previously was grade ten. Now a grade nine person will be fifteen years old. Mm. Will you take a fifteen year old in the street? So that, that's a, that's a problem. So we do not support the new curriculum unless they go back to the drawing board and invite even student union non-